Afternoon peeps, good afternoon everyone, how's everyone doing? Hopefully you guys are all doing well. Don't forget if you're new to the channel, like, share, subscribe. I was just watching the Chris Billum smith Mateus Masternek press conference. That's going to be a good fight, uh, December the 10th, which is a Sunday, which is good, right? I've never understood why boxing restricts itself to mainly Saturdays. I don't get it when every other top sport is played every single day, but boxing is just focused on one day a week. I feel like it restricts the growth. Don't get me wrong, there have been some fights on Fridays and Sundays, but mainly it's a Saturday. So yeah, looking forward to this fight on December the 10th. As I was watching the press conference, I was thinking about Chris Billum smith because he used to be a Matram zone fighter. And I don't know what happened there. Like, all of a sudden, he was fighting on Boxer. And I didn't quite get it. Like, we understood what happened with Akoli and Boatsy because those things were made public. But Chris Billum smith was there, then he wasn't there. And um, if it's a case of Boxer just came with a massive offer, then fair play, right? you got to go. But if it's a case of the zone or Matram, sorry, decided to not renew his contract, I think they've made a mistake because um, I think he's a great guy. He's a great guy. He speaks well. He's obviously got a bit of a following uh, with Bournemouth fans. Um, he's a world champion now, which obviously they didn't know he was going to be, but he was ascending to that, right? He was either going to be a world champion or be in a world title fight. Um, and yeah, I just, I like Chris Billum Smith. So again, if it's a case of Matram decided to let him go, then clearly that's a mistake. But if it's a case of Boxer just offered him big money, then fair play. Um, I've always been a fan of him. You know, when I became a massive fan of him, this might sound a bit silly. We did an event. I can't remember. He might have fought Tommy McCarthy. I think. Anyway, everyone's back at the hotel. I think I've told this story. There's actually two reasons, but this is one of them. Everyone's back at the hotel. That's what normally happens after these events. Everyone goes back to the hotel. Um, Eddie gets drinks in and food and whatever. And everyone's having a drink. And he was there. And I was like, you know, I think I offered him a drink. And it was like, he doesn't drink. And immediately I was like, okay, tick. I like that. I don't know why, but I like that. I mean, I do know why. I don't, if you're an athlete, a top athlete, you shouldn't really be drinking. The second reason, I, I just remember driving. He He lives near where I used to live. So I've always seen him around. I remember driving and it was like a blizzard and I'm seeing this fucking dude run I'm like who the fuck is this crazy dude running in this blizzard turn around Chris Billum Smith and I was like yeah <laughs> I like you I like you dude so yeah I'm um, look good luck to Chris Billum Smith um he's in a good division now there's some good money fights out there some tough fights as well the Akoli rematch I don't know what's going on with that <clears throat> uh, Richard Riatpour rematch remember Riatpour He's the only fighter to have beaten him. Split decision lost a few years back. Jair Pattaya fights there as well. So some good fights to him and hopefully um, he makes some good money as well. All right, let's have a look and see what there is to talk about today. Let's start with this one. Malik Scott, I believe Francis Ngannou would beat a lot of the guys in the top 15 to 20. Um, I feel like that says more about the standard of the guys in the top 15 to 20 as opposed to how good Ngannou is. Um, because a novice boxer, I know he's a fighter, I know that before people come at me, but a novice boxer who has never boxed professionally, regardless of how big and strong he is, shouldn't be able to beat guys in the top 20 who've been doing this all their life. Shouldn't happen, should it? Really, if you, I mean, it shouldn't happen. By the way, I agree with uh, Malik Scott. I agree with that assessment. I think he would beat some guys in the top 10. I mean, look, he nearly beat the number one. So he clearly can beat some of the other guys, but that should not happen. And I think that's a reflection on the, like we have a lot of depth now in the division. Like, I mean, there's some good fights that we made from one to 25, but I don't know how many good fighters are in the division. I really don't. Um, again, a novice has come and nearly beat the number one heavyweight of this generation. Oh, that's a problem. Uh, Usyk promoter. This version of Tyson Fury is not the one that we want to beat. This version is a sin. I don't know what that means. Is that basically saying this version is rubbish and we want to beat the best? I'm going to translate it as that. Um, look, the fight's going to happen February, we're hearing, right? I think Mike Coppinger put something on his Twitter page a few hours ago saying the fight is done for February, not December 23rd. I always said December 23rd wasn't going to happen. Like, super unlikely. Even if Tyson Fury came for that fight unscathed and he dominated Francis Ngannou, I always felt like it was too quick to then chill out for a couple of weeks as you have to and then go into a camp for Usyk. It's just 
for me, it was never going to work. I feel February actually works well for both. Um, Usyk fought in August. That gives him a nice little break. He can then go into camp now um, in December. And for Fury as well, gives him a little break after. It's not necessarily after that fight because, look, it wasn't, it wasn't a grueling fight. I mean, look, I know Tyson Fury's got a black eye, but it wasn't like that fight was life and death. Um, but I feel like all the media he had to do for the fight, I feel like he just needs mentally a little break than get into camp. And I think we're going to see a better Tyson Fury against Alexander Usyk. Like um, a lot of people now have quickly jumped on the Usyk's going to beat Fury bandwagon. And I can understand why you would do that after what we saw on the weekend. But we are going to see a better Fury. We, we just are. If you think that the few that we saw against Ngannou is going to turn up against Usyk, then you are very mistaken. <clears throat> and plus, Ngannou is a different, a different beast to work out. Um, I don't think anyone, there wasn't much tape on Ngannou looking really good. Even, even Ngannou's sparring partner, who I know, a guy called Ruan Visser, he was the former South African heavyweight champion. Even he tweeted, no, on his Facebook, he put that, um, he, he said, Fury is going to win this fight by 99.9% or something, something along those lines. Like, so he gave Ngannou no chance. So no one expected what we saw. Um, we know, though, what Usyk brings to the table. So does Fury. So I'm expecting a better Fury. I think Usyk is going to cause him problems, but um, I think Fury will beat Usyk. I do. I think Fury will beat him. I'm not just going to all of a sudden switch sides because of that performance. Because um, I think a lot of people did that after Usyk Dubois, didn't they? As soon as Usyk didn't look great against Dubois, and, you know, people felt like Dubois should have won that fight because of the body shot. Everyone switched sides and said, Usyk's going to destroy him. Now, all of a sudden, people have gone the other way. So, not for me. I think both guys are going to step up because of how big this fight is for the history of the sport. And I think Fury will be a lot better than he was um, on the weekend. But, yeah, we're hearing a date of February, which does leave that December 23rd date now open. There is no competition, right? I mean, if you're Eddie Hearn, you want to maybe squeeze in a show now because... You're not competing with anything, so you might do it. One fight we know it isn't going to be is Conor Ben Eubank Jr. Conor Ben says, I'm going to take your head clean off your effing neck in three rounds. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe if you listen to Tony Bellew, maybe not if you listen to Ade Oladipo. Um, yeah, that fight isn't happening December 23rd. Eddie's come out in a recent interview saying that fight now is more likely for January um, look, that fight's going to happen. I think Eddie also said, and you guys can correct me if I'm wrong here, that the fight will happen in the UK in January, which hopefully means that Conor Ben and his team have started discussions with the British Boxing Board of Control and UCAD to clear up this mess that's been ongoing for so long now. Because um, that fight needs to take place in the UK. I know we've been hearing about Abu Dhabi. And it needs to be in the UK. It does. It's such a big fight for UK fight fans. Um I don't think, this is where I kind of was going back and forth with Tony as well. Like Tony Belly was talking about this fight could do 100,000 tickets. Like, oh, because they were talking about the Principality Stadium in Wells, right? Which I think is an 85,000 seater or something, 80,000. I just don't think it does that. I, I, maybe I've just, maybe I've just got this wrong, but I feel like it's just an O2 arena fight. I mean, if there was an arena for like 35,000, maybe it could do that. But I don't see how it does 70 to 80. I mean, look, I hope it does that because, you know, I'm going to be working on it. But I'd be very, very surprised if it can do that. Very surprised. But yet again, it looks like that fight's going to be moved uh, to January. Zelfa Barrett's going to fight on the Cameron Taylor undercard. Um, okay, that's good. Uh, Virgil Ortiz, Frederick Lawson to headline the January 6th Zone show in Las Vegas. Uh, that'll be Virgil Ortiz. Going up to 154 pounds. Who is this Frederick Lawson? Never heard of him. Let's have a look. Frederick Lawson. Look at his record. Um, 34 years old. Is this the guy? It is the guy. 34 years old from Ghana. Uh, record of 30 and 3. The three defeats have all been by knockout. Um, his last... Big fight was against Charles Hatley, who's a decent fighter, and he got stopped in that fight. Um, Juan Ruiz stopped him, and he's so every time he stepped up, he's basically lost. Um, okay, we'll see. Virgil's kind of had that career's kind of been paused because of that illness. I wanted him to start 147 because I thought there was really good fights at 147, but there are good fights at 154 if they can move him correctly as well. Alicia Baumgardner, undisputed 130 pound champion, issued show cause notice. 
by the WBO. Yeah, I think like most, they just want to know what's going on. What's going on? Like you had this issue and all of a sudden, nothing. It's a bit, it's a bit like the Dillian White one with um, AJ. Like, okay, what's happening? Is there a ban? Are we going to hear more? I mean, is, are we going to release, is anyone going to release a statement? It's almost as like, okay, we heard that there was a failed um, test. Again, very similar to, to Dillian White and nothing, zero from nobody. And Alicia Baumgartner's one was a while back now, three, four months, same as Dillian White, three, four months, longer for Dillian White. What's happening? Strange. So yeah, the WBO want to know what's going on because I mean, look, they want, I'm guessing, look, she's undisputed. So they're going to want people to fight for her belts or for her to defend her belts. So yeah, hopefully we get some sort of resolution um, on that in the next few days. Um, Tyson Fury on Francis Ngannou. I didn't underestimate him. I trained for 12 weeks. Yeah, probably did. It's weird how people were like, did you, do you watch fights of Fury? Like people were like saying he looked out of shape. That's Fury's shape. Unless you're going to go all the way back to Fury, Vladimir Klitschko, when Fury was fighting British level where he was a lot slimmer. But Fury of recent, that's been his shape. That's just how we, that's just how he is. Um, he has that kind of back fat. That's just what it is. I mean, he was a lot slimmer, which is crazy because he's still very heavy. What was he, 277 pounds or whatever. But he was a lot slimmer than he was when they did the press conference. But when he did the press conference and he took his top off, he must have been, if he weighed in at 277, I think it was that, right? He must have been 330, something like that. Honestly, he was massive. So it's clearly, he's clearly trained for it. It's just, again, Ngannou surprised him. It happens sometimes. Uh, Dimitri Bivol, Crawford is not just good He's amazing. That was, again, me speaking to him. Have I been credited with that? Nope, I haven't been. It's okay. You know what? They've credited it. They've credited that with saying uh, Crawford is amazing, said Bivol to Match from Boxing doing a recent interview. Not just good. Can't even get any credit, eh? Boxing scene can't even give me any credit. Disgraceful. But yeah, it was nice for him to um, be that, that um, good to a fellow boxer I think that was really good that was nice of him um all right two secs what else have we got here uh, Shakur Stevenson MMA dudes need to stay in their lane I'd beat the shit out of Sean O'Malley yeah yeah I mean heavyweights I think you can get away with it as a heavyweight because again it's almost that thing of all it takes is one punch with um the lightweights it isn't like that like Shakur Stevenson would run through Sean O'Malley like a hot knife through butter It'd be embarrassing. There's been some talk about Javante Davis versus Sean O'Malley. Who's interested in this? Now, where's this come from? This isn't you know, like the the want for these crossover fights are few and far between. Like the fact that we've only really had two that have, you know, trended or done good numbers in Garnu Fury and uh, Connor Floyd suggests that there is not that appetite for them unless there's something special. Sean O'Malley versus Javante Davis isn't that. So I'm actually with uh, Shakur here. It's MMA dude, stay in your lane, please, please. Um, anything else? Um, not much more. I think we are done. Short and sweet. All right, people. Um, have a blessed day, and as per usual, we'll get some more videos out in the coming few days. Peace.